In this episode, we're going to storm the Cragmore Castle, just like in Braveheart. What do you mean there's no castle siege in Braveheart? Okay, editor, cut this bit. Cut, 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 cut. This is episode number six in my series about how to run the Lost Mines of Fandelver. First, we're defining the Cragmore Goblins as a faction. Second, we'll cook up some tasty plot hooks to get the players interested. And then we'll look at King Groll as a character. And lastly, we'll break down the unique challenges of running this little dungeon room by room. Part one, the Cragmores as a faction. You can round out the Cragmores in your imagination with these four little factoids. Number one, there aren't that many Cragmores. This particular group, it's just a hodgepodge mix up of a bunch of gobbos, but there's only around a hundred members all up. They've got goblins, which are little, they've got hobgoblins, which are big, and they've got bugbears, which are big and hairy. Over the course of this adventure, if the players fight every Cragmore encounter, then they're gonna wipe out like 80% of this society, which when you think about it, is actually pretty messed up. Number two, the Cragmores are just starting out. This is a burgeoning little society. Society, taking their first promising steps away from their violent, nomadic life. I'd like to imagine that in some far-flung future, a hundred peaceful years from now, the Cragmores might have adopted a kinder ideology. But we're still here on day dot, and in this moment, the Cragmores are still pretty damn violent. Number three, they're a monarchy. Clearly, because they're led by King Grohl, not President Grohl, not Prime Minister Grohl. This doesn't seem like the standard kind of way to organize a goblin society, does it? Instead, it feels like a little bit of a mimicry of a human society. I imagine Grohl walking through the abandoned Cragmore Castle, moonlight filtering through a hole in the dilapidated roof and looking at old paintings and murals of grand wizards and nobles and kings. And he might think that emulating these humans might be a great path towards greatness. So when you're representing the Cragmores in your game for your players, keep in mind that they're a monarchy. So these goblins might be knights or nobles or jesters, and it's all a part of their royal mimicry. And fourth, they are militaristic. Despite their king's noble ambitions, the Cragmores, they have violent delights. They aren't farmers, they're not artisans, they're just captains and soldiers. If they want food, they don't grow it, they take it. And when the Cragmore goblins, they need to repair their goblins stronghold, which is the Cragmore Castle, they can't do it alone. They don't have the technology or the skills or the resources. They need help. And this is where the Black Spider comes in with her engineers and resources and magic to help rebuild this brick and mortar symbol of the Cragmore's hope. Because there's some sneaky snakes, the Cragmore Castle's location is hidden at the start of the adventure. However, there are a bunch of ways the party might get there. In fact, if the party shakes this information out of Clark the Bugbear right at the beginning, the players might even head to the castle before going to Phandalin, which would be dangerous. Dangerous, yes, but it's totally possible. Part two, plot hooks for the Cragmaw Castle. So there are three reasons, one, two, three, three reasons and plot hooks that the players might head towards this castle. And now I'm gonna rank them according to goodness, how good I think the plot hooks are. I looked at how much good was in each plot hook and then compared it and hello and welcome to this list of plot hooks. The most good plot hook is that Gundren's been captured. I know. So this is the entire point what? of the campaign. Even if the players just rescued Gundren and then decided to ignore the Black Spider and the Wave Echo Cave, I'd count that as a legitimate and satisfying end to the story. Gundren, he's imprisoned in King Groll's throne room and he's been captured as part of the Cragmore's alliance with the Black Spider. By the time the players get round to rescuing Gundren, at that moment, the Black Spider has only just extracted the location of the Wave Echo Cave from him 24 hours earlier. If you need a reminder, we built the player's dwarven patron, Gundren, with the players back in episode one. Look up here. The middle list good plot hook was Glassstaff, that wizard nerd. If Glassstaff somehow managed to escape during the Red Brand quest, then he flees to his Cragmore allies in the castle. He's not a very outdoorsy wizard, which would be a druid, I guess. So let the party either track him to the castle or have some townie pass on information that he'd been spotted running from a bear in the woods over yonder direction. If you need a refresher, about Glassstaff as a character, then check out the Red Brand episode up here. The least good plot hook is Sildar's equipment. This plot hook has never really worked for me. When Sildar Hallwinter got captured right at the start of the campaign, the Cragmore Goblin sent his chainmail and his long sword over to the castle, along with Gundren. He's a knight, and his gear probably has some sentimental value to him, so he asked the players to go fetch it. That's it, it's a fetch quest. The reason this little storyline has never really worked for me is that when the party finally discover that Sildar's gear is in the Cragmore Castle, they forget that he'd been captured by the Cragmores right at the beginning, and they assume that his gear being in the Cragmore castle is some kind of evidence of him working with the Cragmores and being a bad guy the whole time. OMG, OMG players, wow. I don't know if this mix up just comes from the way that I described the scene, or if it's a feature of the adventure. If this has happened to you, please let me know downstairs. Part three, King Roll as a character. Hold your horses real quick. If you've gotten this far in the video, thank you. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, all that good juice. Uh, let's get back to it. 
We don't get much in the module about King Grohl specifically. It tells us he's old, he's agile, okay, he's intimidating, and he's vindictive. I don't know how to be vindictive, that's it. <laughs> I don't think that's enough to, to keep him interesting in the story. Especially for our purposes, we need to add a little spice. Add a little spice to him to make him better. King Grohl as a dude has three purposes in our campaign. The first, that he's gonna be the boss battle to neatly tie up this little Cragmore storyline. Also while providing a little bit of a challenge to the task of rescuing Gundren. The second purpose is that he's our last chance to fill in any gaps that the players have in their knowledge about the Black Spider, her plans, or the overall shape of the adventure. And I say last chance because number three is that King Grohl is the spark that lights the fuse on the race to the Forge of Spells. Because after this Cragmore storyline wraps up, we're going to start escalating the Black Spider and the Wave Echo Cave, both of their threat levels. It's going to get more and more dangerous for the players. Role-playing King Grohl can be a little bit tricky because we're up there walking a tightrope. Lean too far over over here and you've got a monster with no proper motivation. Lean too far over here and you've got a sympathetic villain that the players might feel too bad about killing. So you've got to be straight down the middle. And because the lead up to this quest is mostly, hey we've got to rescue Gundren, and not, hey we've got to defeat King Grohl, we've had fewer and fewer opportunities to shine the spotlight on King Grohl and paint an image of him in the player's imagination. So that means you've really just got one scene to nail it. Look, if you had just one shot, one opportunity to make King Grohl the villain you always wanted in one combat encounter. Would you capture it or just let it slip? Yo. So yes, you do want to lean on some of the physical descriptions in the that the book provides. He's big, he's intimidating, but he's also weary. He's lived a long life overcoming obstacle after obstacle and the players are just another obstacle. Imagine King Grohl knows that he will die of old age within the next year and that's how he lives his life. Even should you defeat me, you cannot break me. He has the same love for his subjects that a drill sergeant might have for his grunts. He yells, yeah, but he wants them to succeed. Now I am presuming that drill sergeants do want their grunts to succeed. Don't grovel like a dog, stand like a man, fight like a gob. The goal of King Grohl, King Grohl's goal, is to repair the Cragmore Castle and better preserve his people. If the players could convince King Grohl that they're better able to help him achieve that goal, then he would be willing to betray the Black Spider. But I've only seen that ever happen once. And even and then the players declined the offer. They declined his offer with violence. Part four, the Cragmore Castle, room by room. You might have heard that at the end of this series, I'm looking at making a compiled video of all your best stories from the Lost Minds of Fandelva as kind of a teaser for people thinking about running this campaign. So whether you're running the campaign alongside these videos or not, leave me a story down below about your best story about the Cragmore Castle. The dungeons in Lost Minds really scale up in terms of complexity and the amount of wiggle room afforded to the players. I mean, Cragmore Hideout was mainly just a run and gun, and the Red Brand Hideout had a bit more variance, you know, and with an alternate entrance. But the Cragmore Castle, it's at a whole nother level. Hey, if you want to check out this podcast I recorded with Zipper on Disney up here, we talk about all the podcasts. Oh, we talk about all the dungeons in this adventure. <laughs> but the Cragmore Castle is a little bit different than all those other dungeons beforehand. The shape of it, though, is an old standard. So you just say to the players, okay, here in front of you is this obstacle. How are you going to overcome it? And the players are going to look at this castle and come up with a whole bunch of crazy solutions. Here are some of the solutions that I've encountered when I've run this adventure. Solution A is the players walk to the front door, announce themselves as the protagonists, and start murdering goblins. Solution B is the players walk up to the front door again, but this time they use their red brand and glass staff disguises to bluff their way into the castle and they get as far as they can before they get caught. Solution D is that they rally the people of Phandalin and they arm them with the red brand supplies and they storm the castle. This is something that I've never seen but that would be so cool. Given that there's a few ways to approach this I'm going to presume that you have the most basic players who just want to walk through the front door which probably means they're going to enter through room one. So Gundred's imprisoned up here in the throne room so that's our goal. Room 14. Then the most common path I've seen players take through this dungeon is they go through like this, through the banquet hall. Now prepare yourself for we are about to cut a few encounters. Room six, this whole room does not exist. No fight, no room. Room four over here, this room is empty, but the room still exists. We're gonna cut the goblins from room nine and combine it with room eight. And the alternate entrances are over here in room 10. This is where the players can roll to unlock the gate. 
or room 11, which is a secret door. Room one, the castle entrance. This is your opportunity to really drill home just how dilapidated the castle is. Well, here's your problem, the door's off. None of this is up to code. Not only should you carry this theme through the whole castle, but you wanna point out areas where the goblins have tried unsuccessfully to repair the sections, just to highlight their, their will to repair and also their inability, inability to do it. There are some arrow slits here with the goblins in room three. They can take some pot shots if they see the players. Room two is the tract hall. This is just a hallway with a bunch of other rooms, but there are two points I want you to take away from this kind of hallway. In general, when you're designing a hallway, I don't want you to make it this complex. There are too many options here. As a test, when you're trying to work out whether a hallway has too many options, try and describe all of the exits to a fictional player and imagine doing that without a map. And if you could do it successfully, great. If you couldn't, too complicated. We're not gonna mess with that in this instance because it's not really worth the effort here, but it's something to keep in mind when you're making your own dungeon. The second point I want you to take away from this hallway is that we've got a trap here, but if you remember in the last video, we cut the hallway trap. So what's the deal? Where's the consistency? We're gonna keep this one because it has dramatic consequences. Let's say if the players trigger this trap, then it's actually gonna pull down this whole wall and it's gonna reveal room eight, the dark hall. And then the Grick that lives inside, it's gonna attack the players. Ooh, creepy. Room three is the archer post. Now this room is actually two locations here and here. The module says that there's two goblins in each of these rooms, but let's just make it one in each. When the players try and open one of these doors, the goblins have actually barricaded themselves inside and they'll say something like, no, thank you. Uh, we don't need any adventurers in here. Thank you. Uh, we're fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice day. If the party kicks down one of the doors, it gets the goblin's wishes clearly, then the goblin inside will fight, but it's actually the goblin in the opposite room that's going to open the door and run to get help. As this second goblin takes its first steps out the door, roll initiative and say directly to the players, this second goblin over here, they're running to get help. If this one down bottom, if he's the runner, then it's going to head to the banquet hall in room seven and it's going to come back with goblin allies. If this one up top is the runner, it's going to head through room five all the way to room nine, which is the goblin shrine, and then it's going to return riding the Grick. So basically, if the runner succeeds in their goal of getting help, then you want to roll whichever room they got to, you want to roll that room's combat into this hallway encounter. If you really want to give the players a chance to catch the runner, say it used its action to dismantle the barricade and get out of the door, so that means it can't dash and, you know, can't just get there in one round. Room four is the ruined barracks. There are normally three goblins in here, but we've cut this encounter. This encounter is meant to be one of those put these enemies down quickly before they run and get help kind of things. But in the interest of reducing the number of combats in this dungeon so we can get through it a bit faster, that's why we transferred this roll to the goblins in room three, those two runners. Room five is the storeroom. Now this is a storeroom where the players can find Sildar's chainmail and his longsword. There's also very fine brandy in here that if a character drinks it, it's gonna restore one hit point. And I absolutely love that because it reminds me how they treated food in Lord of the Rings. It's not magical, it's just the morale bolstering effect of excellent brandy. Room six is the hobgoblin barracks. We've cut this encounter and this entire room because these hobgoblins don't challenge the players in any kind of meaningful way. They don't advance the story and they aren't particularly fun. If you want to know my full criteria when deciding whether or not to cut an encounter, then you can check out this video up here about wandering monsters. This banquet hall in room seven, you can play it as written. It's a fight between eight goblins who'll flee if their leader Yeg is killed. But you've got to make sure that you describe Yeg in a way that really singles him out as a leader. So the players know they should target him. Room eight and nine are the dark hall and the goblin shrine. The goblins in room nine, they don't exist because we've already fought heaps of goblins. They're boring by now, right? Instead, it's just the Greek, which is this big wormy boy hiding on the roof. I reckon you could add some visuals here to really clarify that the Grick is a pet of the goblins. Maybe the goblins leave out a food bowl for the Grick and it says, you know, fluffy or whatever. And there's a sign that says, bless this mess, <laughs> bless this Grick. So there's meant to be a magical statue hidden in this room somewhere. But I think instead you could move all of those magical properties to this chalice on the altar over here. I went on a podcast last year called First Roll On In. I told this story about how my players literally fought each other over this chalice for some reason. There's a link in the description. It was good fun. Room 12 is the guard barracks. There are two hobgoblins in this room and they're dressed in ramshackle knight's attire. These are the king's guard. As soon as combat kicks off, one's gonna position himself in a choke point between the players in room 14 and valiantly fight to the death. You shall not harm the king. 
The King's Guard protects the realm. The other hobgoblin either retreats to <laughs> retreats. The other hobgoblin either retreats to room 14, but if that path is blocked, it's instead gonna go down here and try and release the owlbear. Now, when the owlbear gets out, the first thing it's gonna do is kill the hobgoblin that released it. Sorry, my dude. Room 13 is the owlbear's tower. I would consider cutting this encounter if owlbears weren't already such an iconic creature. Not only is this a classic creature, this is a classic situation. What you do is you put a tough creature in front of the party, something that's clearly avoidable with no discernible reward attached or reason for engaging this dangerous enemy. And then he watched the party say, oh yeah, I really want to fight that owlbear. So let's leave this encounter as is. Room 14 is the king's quarters. Like with every boss encounter, this fight needs to start with role play. Even if you have to pause initiative for a little bit, that's totally fine because our boy has got things to say. The situation doesn't necessarily have to end in combat. I mean, the players could convince Grohl that they could help him achieve his goal of repairing the castle better than the black spider could. He might even let them leave. One way of achieving this might be if one of the players flashed the sheriff's badge that they found in the Red Brand jail cells, convincing Grohl that the town of Phandalin might be able to help them rebuild. Regardless of how the players attempt to convince King Grohl, he insists on keeping Gundren as collateral. Or if one of the players want to take his place, he'll, he'll take that as well. But he absolutely will let Gundren tell them the location of the Wave Echo Cave so we can advance the story, and so the players can get there and smash the Black Spider. But more often than not, things are gonna kick off. To make this moment as epic as possible, we are massively gonna change this combat. We're gonna switch up the combatants, we're gonna mess with King Grohl's stat block, make him a little bit scarier, and we're gonna add some dynamic terrain in the room to make it more fun and cinematic. This is a boss battle, and it needs to feel like a boss battle. There's no doppelganger in this fight. It's King Grohl, his wolf, a hobgoblin, and then enough goblins to make sure there's equal combatants on each side. The hobgoblin is either the same hob knight that retreated from room 12, or it's a fresh one, either way. According to the book, King Grohl is just a very tough bugbear, which I think is kind of a waste. I want to highlight his role as a battle commander, so I've given him some new abilities. The biggest change is that he can use his action to mark one of the players, and then all attacks against that player have advantage, but only one player can be marked at a time. If you're interested, click up here to get this new and improved King Grohl stat block, as well as a whole bunch of resources for the Lost Minds of Fandalva over on Patreon. I really appreciate the support. This room is way too bare for any really fun combat theatrics as well. So you, friendly Dungeon Master, you are going to add some fun little features for the players to play with. There's going to be an iron chandelier for swinging or dropping on people. There's a fireplace for setting the rug on fire. There's manacles against the wall alongside Gundren for clamping some fool in irons. I want you to put opportunities in this space so the players can treat this fight like a Jackie Chan action scene. After the battle, the purpose of Gundren here is to get your players to the Wave Echo Cave and to the finale ASAP. But you made a specific Gundren for your party way back in session zero. This is specific to your characters and your players, so I can't help you with this, I'm sorry. But it's really easy to get to the end of a session and then be way too exhausted to have the energy to do this important role-playing scene. But that's why you've got to really prep for it. You've really got to nail this character and this scene. If I were prepping this dungeon, I would spend about a quarter of my prep time working on this scene. There's one alternative storyline that I want to suggest, some secret jitsu that I've never really tried, but I think it could be fun. This would take a lot of work and it's something you'd have to implement at the starter campaign, but... So the Cragmores are imitating a royal court right? Surely they would be interested in capturing a anointed knight like Sildar. In some alternate reality Lost Minds campaign, if Sildar got captured instead of Gundren, I can imagine that King Grohl would make this noble prisoner train his subjects in some kind of knightly warfare or courtly protocol. A little switcheroo like this would mean there's some value to the prisoner, even beyond their knowledge of the Lost Minds, and I think it might help characterize the Cragmores a little better. But it would also mean rewriting the campaign from the beginning, to put all of Gundren's relationships with the players onto Sildar. Or you could just make Gundren a knight as well. Whatever. Oh wow, not many people get this far in the video, you've done it. Congratulations. Wow, hey. If you've gotten this far, you're part of my core audience, my core fan base, and I love you. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I've got a Discord. Uh, it's in the link in the description. Come chat to us over there. That's where all the cool, cool kids hang out. Also, have you seen these patrons? These guys support me. I'm very grateful. Thank you all.